Entity queries are an essential part of Unity's entity component system, and if you've used Unity ECS, then you've definitely used entity queries. But as I was doing research for this topic, I don't know if I really understood how deep entity queries go. So in today's video, we're going to be talking all about entity queries. We're going to be giving you kind of a general overview if you're not super familiar with what they can do yet. Um, and then we are going to be going a little bit more into depth on some of the different types of entity queries and some of the cool things that you can do with them. But if you do find today's video helpful, I would really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about Unity's entity component system and their data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave those down in the comment section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev slash Discord. So let's start at the top. What exactly are entity queries? So to put succinctly, it's basically a way to get a view of data in Unity ECS. Um, basically, the way that it works is when we define one of these entity queries, we say that, you know, for example, um, we want all the entities that have this specific component or maybe this specific set of components. Um, and then from that, we basically get this entity query. And then we can use that entity query to um, actually get the individual entities that have those data components. And so there are a number of things that we can actually do with these entity queries. Um, so the most common one is going to be we're actually going to be able to run a job with that entity query. Um, so basically, you know, we have this you know set of entities now, and now we can kind of do something. We can iterate across all these entities and perform some data transformation. Um, so these you know entities do things and things happen in our game project. Another thing that we can do is with our query we can get a native array of those entities if we just want to um, you know have easy access to that native array of entities you know we can kind of query for them and then we can have that array of entities if we need to uh, maybe iterate through them later or kind of like reference individual entities we now have that array of entities based off of our entity query and we can also get native arrays for the data components in our entity queries um, so basically what this means is let's say we have an entity query that says you know give me everything with a translation component well, we can actually um, export that to a native array of translation components. And then we have this array of translation components that we can, you know, again, iterate through or reference in the future. And one final thing that you can do with these entity queries is control whether or not a system is updating. Um, in the video that I did on Unity singletons, I showed you how we can only update a method when that singleton is present. Um, we can do basically the same thing by passing in an entity query into the require for update method. Um, and that basically means that as long as we have entities that match that query, then the system is going to be updated. If there are no entities that match that query, that system will not be updated. Now let's talk a little bit about the different types of entity queries. So the main one, the one that we're going to be using the most often and the one that is recommended to be used is the entities.foreach. Now this is you know, probably the first one that you learn because it's pretty much the easiest to use and it allows us to do some simple as well as some decently complex things. So basically the way this works is we kind of define the components that we want um, inside our for each function. So let me demonstrate this to you using this little sample project that you see playing behind me where we basically have some kind of soldiers marching in a parade and all the project files and code features in this video are available in the links in the description below. So here's the system and inside the on update function, we're we're defining our entities.foreach lambda function. And then inside here, this is where we're actually going to define our entity query. So first thing is this entity here. We'll uh, just ignore this. We'll come back to this in just a moment. Um, but this is actually the portion of the code where we're actually defining um, what data we want to query for. So in this case, we're going to be querying for any entity with a translation component as well as a soldier move data component. Now, there's a couple things to note here. Uh, the first is this, you'll see this keyword defined before each of these components. So the ref keyword means that we can read and write to this component. And the in keyword means that we can only read from this component. And it's very important that we define all the ones with the ref keyword, that is the read and write ones, before all the ones with the in keyword. And it's also very important that when we define our entity queries, that we specify these as read only if we only need read only access to them, because for one, it's much more efficient to have read only access to components. And number two, it can also cause some issues if we have um, write access to components that we don't exactly need write access to. And then you'll see after the component, we actually define a name for the variable. So for the translation one, I've just called it position. And then the soldier move data, I've also called soldier move data. 
and that's how we can actually access these um, as variables inside the entities.foreach function. Now there are also a number of special named parameters that we can pass into the uh, for each function. I'm not gonna go too into detail on these because they don't necessarily have to deal with entity queries, um, but basically there's three of them that we can use. The first one is entity, and we can call the variable anything that we want. I typically just use E or the word entity. The next one is an int, and it must be called entity in query index. And this refers to a unique identifier for each entity in our query. And this is very useful when we're integrating with entity command buffers. And then the final special parameter is an int native thread index. And this also must be called specifically native thread index. And this gives us the ID for uh, the thread executing the function most likely just going to be used for debugging purposes. And then one final thing to note about these parameters going inside the entities.foreach function is by default, we can only have up to eight of these. However, if we want to have more, um, we can actually use custom delegates to create our own. I'm not gonna be going over that in this video because that might be a dedicated video on its own. And so that just gives us this very basic behavior where we just go ahead and move all these soldiers forward in the parade like you see playing on the screen here and you see even in the far back where we have these black colored soldiers um, they're still all just moving forward even though the components on these differ from all the green soldiers the ones in the back do still meet the requirements of having a translation component as well as the soldier move data component now this is kind of only the beginnings of what we can do with these entities dot for each functions so there's actually like a number of with modifiers that we can use and i like to separate these out onto different lines here so we could just go ahead and create another line and so we can say with and you'll see there's like a number of ones that we can use um, so we can do a with all a with any a with none there's also with change filter and with shared component as well as with entity query options now i went over a couple of these in the uh, video that i made on tags using tags in unity's entity component system um, so go check that out if you want to learn a little bit more about that and I've also done videos on the change filter as well as the shared component filter. But there's actually one more with method that I want to talk about right now, and that is the with store entity query in field. So basically what this does is this gives us a reference to the entity query outside of our for each function. So you'll see what I'm doing at the top of the system. I'm just defining this new entity query called soldier query. And then you'll notice that I actually access this soldier query inside the on start running function. Now we can do that because this entity query that's defined inside the for each, this is actually generated when the system is created. So that means that we can actually reference um, this soldier query, the actual query before this on update function even runs. So you'll see in the on start running, we could basically just uh, do a debug.log that gives us the count of how many soldiers that we have uh, based off of this entity query right here. So we'll come back to Unity, enter play mode, and then you'll see that in our console, we see that there are 130 soldiers in the parade. That about wraps it up for entity queries inside entities.foreach functions. However, there's still ways that we can use entity queries outside of entities.foreach functions, which is what we'll be going over next. So now I'm just going to go ahead and disable this system here so we're not um, getting any confusion with uh, systems overlapping each other. Um, and then we'll move on to this other system that I've created that's a very similar thing, except this time it uses an iJob entity bash to process all the entities. Um, and that's because that we're actually going to be basically defining the entity query manually rather than having the entities.foreach function generate it for us. So you'll see that it's pretty easy to set up these entity queries. Um, we can just use the get entity query method if we're inside of a system base class. If we're outside of a system base class, we actually have to do something a little bit different, which I'll talk about in a minute. Um, but you'll see that we're just setting this uh, variable soldier query equal to get entity query. And then inside here, this is where we actually define the components that we want access to. So if we want, we can just do a type of translation. Um, however, we need to be a little bit careful when we just use this regular type of, even though it's very easy to do it this way. Um, this basically means that we'll have read and write access to this translation component. So if we want to actually do it where we have a read only, we can use this component type dot read only. And then inside the type brackets, we can just pass in the soldier move data. Now they do also have a component type dot read write where you can pass in the translation. 
Um, I think either the read write or the type of is fine to use. It's probably best practice though to use the component type uh, dot read write. And then so now that we have this entity query, we can basically do all the entity query things with it. Um, so for example, we, if we want to pass it into a job, you'll see that I've created this soldier march job, which I am doing a schedule parallel on. This is where I pass in the soldier query. Also, if we wanted a var for the entities, we can say soldier query dot to entity array and then pass in the allocator here. And that's basically going to give us the native array of entities that we want. And then, you know, similar thing, if we wanted a component data array, we could just do the dot to component data array. In here, we pass in the type of data or array that we want. Um, this must be one of the components, of course, that we pass into our um, entity query here and then we'll just put in the allocator of what we want for that uh, array to be and then like i mentioned we can also do the require for update passing in the soldier query so this basically means that this on update function is only going to actually execute when there are one or more entities that fit the requirements of this query and then you'll see when we come back to unity you'll see that our entities continue marching on forward now one thing that i did real quickly want to touch on is how we actually access entity queries outside of system-based classes um, we can do the same thing inside of a system-based class but instead we'll actually do um, our entity manager dot create entity query and then in here, we can basically pass in the same thing. We basically, again, just need a component array. Um, so we can pass in as many component types as we want, just like we did up here in the get entity query. And that's going to create the entity query. Now, it's always preferred to use the get entity query uh, because when we do that, it actually is going to um, cache this value inside here. So every time, even though we're running this in the on update function, if this entity query isn't changing, it's just going to return us the cached version of this entity query um, for this soldier query here. Because it's smart enough to know that if this entity query changes, then it needs to get the entity query again. However, the create entity query, it's always going to create a new entity query every single time. So again, we want to avoid using that unless it's absolutely necessary. And then also, if we do want to add any like uh, change filters or shared component filters, we actually do that after we define the entity query. Uh, so once we have, say, this soldier query, we can do a dot set shared component filter, and then we would pass in the shared component that we would want to filter against. Again, check out the video that I did on shared components if you want a little bit more information on that. And it should be noted that when we do set any filters like this, um, it's basically going to cache that filter and it's going to be there every time that cached query is referenced. If we do want to clear that out, we can just do a soldier query dot reset filter and that's going to reset any of the change filters or shared component filters. And then finally, I just want to go over a little bit more advanced topics when it comes to entity queries. Um, so we can do a little bit more complex things here. So you'll see that in the on create method, we've created this new entity query DESC. I would assume this stands for entity query description. Um, but basically inside here, we can do a little bit more complex things kind of closer to um, some of the things that we can do inside of our entities for each functions. And we can actually define all any and none. So these are basically pretty self explanatory. This basically means that um, all this is the component data array that we define here where we need all the components that we pass in here. We only have the soldier move data. This is only the required component that we need for this one. Now the anyone is a little bit different because it basically means we need at least one of the ones that we define into here. So you'll see that we've passed in a spin speed data as well as a jump data. So this means that anything that has either a spin speed data or a jump data or both a spin speed and a jump data would meet this criteria. If we did not have either of these, then that would not fall under this entity query. And then finally, we can define none. So in this case, we're saying uh, anything with the commander tag, we do not want to include in this entity query. So this is basically going to be the entity query that we're going to use for um, basically the special ops soldiers that we have in the back, because these guys are you know, kind of the, the, you know, the really show off guys, they can do uh, some more kind of cool moves. So in this case, you know, they all do have the soldier move data script on them. So they're actually going to be moving forward from the previous systems that we've set up. And then about half of them are going to have the spin speed data. So they're going to basically be doing like cartwheels the whole time. And then uh, the other half are going to have the jump data and they're going to be jumping up and down throughout the whole time. And then our commander, actually, I think I do have the spin speed data on it. 
but it does also have the commander tag so we're going to ignore anything with the commander tag on it because the commander we're just going to have him walking forward so you'll see that with the entity query description that's not exactly the entity query itself we have to do a get entity query and then we're passing in the entity query description that we defined um, up in the on create here. So then using this soldier query, we can pass this into our job here. So now you'll see once these spec up guys come into view, you'll see that they're consistently moving forward at the same pace as all the other uh, soldiers in the parade. But again, you'll see that about half of them are doing these like front flips forward and then the other half are jumping up and down. You'll see the commander is continuing just walking nice and stoically in front of um, his whole little squad there. Um, so yeah, that's uh, some cool things that we can do with entity queries. And there's even more crazy things that we can do with entity queries. I'm not going to show exactly how all these things work, um, but we can actually combine entity queries. So if we have multiple of the entity query DESC um, classes, we can actually combine those. We can pass multiple ones of those uh, into a get entity query, and that's basically going to combine them. Um, the documentation says it uses a logical or operator to compare between the two. I think most of the times it would probably be better to make a whole new entity query rather than, you know, having to try and combine multiple entity queries and make some kind of weird third entity query. But I guess there are some cases where that might make sense to use. And then finally, there are also a number of helpful methods that we can use on these entity queries. Um, so one of them is the is empty method. So we can easily just check if an entity query has no entities associated with it. Um, we can also calculate the uh, number of chunks or the number of entities that are going to be returned by this entity query. Um, we can do this with and without some component filtering if we want. There's the matches function where we can pass an entity into that and then we can see if that entity basically fits under the criteria of that entity query. And then one last one that I thought was really cool is there's actually an entity manager dot universal query and this returns all the entities in the world, no matter if these are, um, you know, the prefab entities or just that like basic world time entity, um, every single entity, no matter what components are going to be returned using the entity manager dot universal query. All right, so that's just about going to do it for today's video on entity queries. I hope that with today's video, you did learn something and it kind of gave you some ideas of some of the things that you can do with entity queries. Um, and maybe if there was some problem in your code that can actually be solved by um, using some better entity queries or some more advanced entity queries, I should say, um, then, you know, I hope that this video did help you out with that. If it did help you, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that like button. Also, once again, feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more videos about uh, Unity's entity component system and the data-oriented technology stack. Of course, if you do have any questions for me or suggestions for future videos, you can always leave those down in the comments section below or join us over on Discord over at tmg.dev discord. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.